Walk with me through the cellar door. The storm is coming, Francis. A portal to a more skeptical world. Cellar Door of Skeptics begins right now. Prepare for the revolution with your hosts, Christopher Tanner and Chris Hanna. Thank you for joining in for another episode of Cellar Door Skeptics with your hosts, Christopher Tanner and Chris Hanna. Welcome back to Cellar Door Skeptics, folks. We have another episode. We're on episode 30, 35. We are. You got it right. We did. I got it right this time. I only had to practice for about a half hour. So we're a half hour late into recording this just because I spent a half hour going, episode, episode. Damn it, Hannah, Hannah, what, what episode are we on? Are we are we on thirty five yet? Or are we on twenty one? You practiced the number, but you just said the exact same thing that Jeremiah said that we're Chris Tanner and Chris Hannah. So they now they know doubly sure who we are. Yeah, we're 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 the Chris's. You can call our our show the Chris and Chris instead well, of Pete we were and Pete or Chris someone, and Chris. We were talking to someone that a potential uh, future interview and stuff. And he's like, wait, I thought I was talking to Chris. Aren't you Chris? Who's Chris? <laughs> he was very confused, wasn't he? <laughs> And that, that's how it rolls with this show. You know, you get a little bit confused. You get a little bit of drama. You get a little bit of excitement. I mean, for fuck's sake, I went off on Gorilla Gate last week. And you know what's ironic, Hannah? You want to? We're going to start the show off with a little bit of a tangent because I'm going to tell you what's a little bit ironic. And that's well, a, that's are, are a song we, are we reference, doing real right? Real irony, or is this just a coincidence? Because that's that's no, this is real irony. Okay. My father and I do don't agree on politics at all. We 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 don't. He's an all lives matter. I'm a black lives matter person you know okay. he came over today you know to uh, borrow my lawnmower because uh, his lawnmower broke and he's freaking out he's got to mow his lawn and it's like yeah it's only you know half an inch you really don't need to do that but anyway <laughs> you know so i was like here borrow my lawnmower whatever i don't care and he he goes is it so, somehow this gorilla the gorilla gate came up and my dad just says yeah you know oh we were talking about my dog because my dog's 13 years old 13 and a half years old now and when you have a, a warning on the front of your house for beware of this <laughs> that, this, this blind that came with pug. the house <laughs> it came with the house i have a blind pug in my house yes it came with the damn house but you know but we we're talking a little bit about my dog because he has to go for an overnight visit because he's having issues again and i i'm i'm very afraid his pancreas is is going honestly but we don't know and we want to give them a fair shot. And so, you know, like 100, 150 bucks is not a big deal to go, you know, hey, here, here you go, vet. Watch him all day. Tell me what his sugar is. Is he regulating sugars properly? Because we don't think he is. But we were talking about it. And, you know, we were talking about the, the garden I have up back and, you know, how the bunnies are still getting in. And we're, you know, father-son type shit. You know, when you get old, you don't talk about real stuff anymore. Man, this show's turning into the garden hour. <laughs> it is. It's the garden hour. It was last week. It is this week. But it kind of led to, you know, the bunnies. And I was like, yeah, my damn dog don't scare the bunnies away anymore. My dad just laughs. He's like, yeah, he's kind of getting old. I was like, yeah, he's pretty lazy. And he's like, yeah, well, you might have to put him down soon because you don't want him to get real bad. He's like, yeah, I know. You know, th- th- thanks for reminding me of that, Dad. That, that, that made me feel good today. You know, so but how the hell does this get to the gorilla? It gets to the gorilla because my dad doesn't didn't he, my dad goes well you know what just happened right in cincinnati and it's like oh fuck dad that happened two weeks ago yeah, i know you're not on facebook or anything and you, you're not real up on current events but that happened a couple weeks ago and he was he was like yeah so you know that kid fell in that gorilla pit and you know i don't understand why everybody's crucifying the parents here and i was like thank you i agree with you on this you know and he's like y- you do and i was like yeah i was like yeah i don't fucking understand why the hell the people are crucifying the parents i think it's fucking stupid and i don't want to get into this again cuz if you if you're listening to this you should go back to episode 34 you can skip all the way to the end and you can find gorilla gate and, and, Chris, and Chris does not get emotional at all. I don't. I no, say very sane, it, very rational, very low temper. It was like Ben Stein on i don't know dep- opium trip. He was just like mellow Mellow yellow. I was mellow yellow. But we, uh, the amazing thing was, there you go. See, I got, I worked that word in for you, Hannah. But you the, the amazing thing was, is that, you know, my, my father and I were sitting there and he's actually talking about it. And I'm sitting there going, I actually agree, I agree with you. I agree with you. Maybe you watch. Damn it, you're a Republican. Maybe he listened to the show because you said your mom listened to the show. My dad, my like, dad doesn't listen. There's can- no way my dad could get through the show. As soon as we started talking politics, my dad would be like, done. Boop. See ya. My, my, we don't agree on politics. We just don't, and that's fine. I mean, I guess I don't understand why he wouldn't want to change his mind, but I, uh, whatever. 
I mean, I grew again. I grew up listening to fucking Rush Limbaugh, man. Like I was a Rush Limbaugh fan before I understood that he was a piece of shit, misogynistic asshole. You know, I don't even care that he does drugs. Let him do drugs. I don't give a shit. He's well, just Limbaugh, an asshole. Rush Limbaugh was back in the news. Weirdly enough, connected to the gorilla, he said that since the gorilla exists, evolution is untrue. That, wait, that, wait, no way. Yeah. Seriously? He he tied in evolution not being true into this gorilla story. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, people were just, I mean, I'm pretty sure Dan Errol, or Errol, how do you say his last name? It was so bad that he even heard, he was like, really? That's, okay, why not? Let's put it on Patheos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, we, we don't have anything better to talk about, I guess, because Rush Limbaugh's a douche. Yeah, that's just a go-to. That's what they call low, low-hanging low fruit is uh, making fun of Rush Limbaugh on a skeptical show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too difficult. I would agree. But you didn't all tune in tonight to hear Chris Hanna talk about gardening or Gorilla Gate again because I, no. I do think I do think we, we covered Gorilla Gate quite a bit last week. And I'll be More honest, I'm I'm sick of talking about it. And if you don't agree with me, then send me an email at cellardoorskeptics at gmail dot com and I'll fucking answer you. I'll I'll bring you on the goddamn show, how about we'll talk about it on the show. You know, and, and if you want, we could even do a private hangout and you could record it for your show. You know, if you just sign up on Patreon Donate a little bit of money every episode, help keep the lights on. Then, you know, what we can do is we could take it and make it a thing. You could keep it, keep it private. You could keep it public. You could be like, hey, look, this asshole fucking messaged me and he, he's got this video. I'll do whatever you want for wow. Gorilla Gate. You're a prostitute. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of am a little bit. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. We're spreading the good word, right? Yeah. I, I have nothing wrong with uh, prostitutes. I, I actually think that's an admirable career that you can go into. I, I have no issues with it, to be perfectly yeah. honest with well, you. Well, let's see. See if you can get me into a rant here. We've got a topic, and you keep saying that you're going to try to get me ranty. I don't know, man. It's tough. I'm pretty I'm pretty just dejected lately. I haven't been uh, super energetic about politics because uh, it's just I think that's what they're designed to do is wear you down. So I, I would disagree. I think you're not super excited because of the fact that you're, you were sold on one candidate. You actually genuinely bought into the fact that this one candidate had a chance. And I won't tell you he doesn't have a chance in the realm of the whole time he ran. Well, yeah, but in, I mean, in true reality, I mean, come on, for fuck's sake, he was an independent. He doesn't have as much experience as Clinton. I mean, Sanders, great guy. I endorse his politics a lot more than I endorse Hillary's politics for the most part. But in true reality, he, he doesn't have as much. He, he just doesn't. And, and the media has, has made a fucking circus out of this shit. It's a fucking circus right now. You know, I mean, we we could sit down and look at this, and we can get sit there and go, you know, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, and I just sit there and think, you know, Bernie's not the only, he's not the, the rational one here. You know, maybe his politics fit closer to me, and I'll admit to that. His politics are closer to what I would believe would be something, you know, I could support. But that doesn't mean that this still isn't a circus and that he still has it somewhat bought into the hype and he's using social media and he's using new tactics to create a wave of people that believe like him and speak out like him. And in the end, I don't think a lot of these people are understanding of the education behind what he's talking about. I think people just hear bits and pieces and sound words and are like, ooh, latch on, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy. You know, that's, that's how I see this. Uh, yeah, that's basically the whole idea of this entire segment. It's just to kind of gauge the temperature of what's going on. And obviously the temperature has gone down significantly on Bernie's side, mostly because of the the what happened with the re- most recent polling. California, people were thinking that if Sanders could really take a, a major win there, like more than just a couple of points here and there, either below or above Hillary, but like a serious win would change the tempo and going into the convention would be a, a major contender like that a win a big win in California would have made him a contender in the eyes of well wow maybe delegates would change pace but basically what happened is that that didn't that didn't happen that's that is the the cold hard fact with um with all of the numbers that have come in and there's a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff that are coming through and that's that's been the kind of the the um the story of the uh, the Sanders campaign with yeah. a lot of the really really idealistic and ideologue type followers is we're always trying to I guess explain away a loss and sometimes you just have to just accept it like sometimes you just don't you don't win and so 
what what is the temperature here and what is the whole point and what is, what what are you trying to do as far as uh, as a Bernie Sanders follower now and that's one thing I've been trying to figure out is I really I obviously when it comes to picking the 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 lesser of two evils I've been doing that since Kerry I've been doing that since the Bush Kerry um election I I'm tired of it I'm tired of doing that like I thought the Obama administration was going to be you know a big change I thought it was going to be a big change away from the economic big money people and it really didn't turn out to be what I wanted and so I thought maybe that would be the chance in this one and I still support like I like you said too your politics align with Sanders much more I still support it and I I do support going all the way to the convention and Pushing your agenda all, all the way. The reason is because of the idea of a revolution. There's a great interview that uh, um, Chris Matthews and Bernie Sanders had. And essentially after Matthews bashing him for a long period of time, Sanders says he wants to change the way politics are done in the United States. And I think he's done that to a certain degree by getting more young people <laughs> interested. We'll see what happens in the next few elections, the next midterm election that comes through. If, if there's any lasting results to this campaign cycle blending in further into like getting the millennials more interested. Yeah, but this is where we're going to disagree somewhat. I mean, this is where I'm going to sit here and stop and say, hold on a minute. Right. So you're right. We both agree with, with, with Hillary or with Bernie over Hillary for the most part in politics, but I'm going to, I'm going to stop you there and say, hold on. In reality, Hillary has a lot of fucking experience. Yeah. We don't agree with the big banks, but how many other fucking goddamn politicians out there are big banks, right? How many of them are out are are out there? Are big banks? Are supportive of the big banks of of Wall Street, of all that shit that you get, that everybody's accusing Clinton of? How many? Well, they people, pretty much all are. Like, that's, thank that's you. The whole so hold on, that's the whole problem. Is they yeah. the mo- majority all are right? Yeah. So we're we're fighting against the majority, and I don't disagree that we shouldn't fight against the majority, but. We are fighting against a large majority. And, and if we look at evolution and how evolution works, it doesn't happen in a revolutionary stance. Revolution only happens in extreme circumstances. Are we in a dire circumstance right now, Hannah? Are we really genuinely in this dire circumstance where the economy is going to cra- crash and where everything's going to fall apart and where people are going to get fucked in the ass, basically, because <laughs> there's nothing for us to go on on either side? And I was trying to make this a PG show, and obviously I just ruined it. You got me in a rant, and I'm trying to get you in a rant. Yeah, but, I know. but think about this. Well, Stop. Hold on. Hold on. Think about it. Is it really choosing the worst of two evils, uh, honestly? Do you really honestly think the big banks are such a bad thing that if everything changed radically and we just all of a sudden went, boop, flipped the switch and went on the opposite side, which is to a point what Sanders is is telling us to do, if we did that, would it really be better for society? That's not how evolution works. A big revolution, you know, usually means lots of death, lots of distrust, lots of all sorts of different fallouts inside of just an evolutionary biological understanding. If you apply that to politics, in true logic, we shouldn't have this. We don't want that. We may support Sanders. We may be in line. We may be revolutionary in our understanding of things, Hannah. But in reality, is that best for the country? Well, that's the big question is whether or not if we get into another end with Hillary and continuing the same politics that President Obama has continued, is is that going to drive us into the same kind of fall that we had in 2008 that the end of the Bush administration brought in with all of our economic problems, all of our current economic policy, uh, the competitions in the TPP and globalized um, economies that essentially all of the things that we don't like about economically where this country is going is that going to increase disparity is it going to create a new great depression is it going to be beyond worse than 2007 2008 we really haven't changed course that's the reason why i think the economic revolution and why the economic position that the sanders campaign has always had that's the i, that, I would disagree with my, you do we have to have changed course look, okay look at interest rates interest rates are going down to almost nil we're almost going backwards in interest rates we're almost going to the point where there's and there's, there's no reason for it yeah but that's not because you know, we didn't do something positive. It's because we did so much positive that it reversed that effect. No, the reason the interest rates were held down low is because the Fed artificially held them low. And when artificially interest rates are held down like that, it increases inflation. And what that does is reduce the amount of money that poor people have because their their dollars are worth less money. There's a lot of economic things that have been happening that are bad as far as forced um, in, uh, interest rates being held down low. It benefits a lot of people who have a lot of money, and they've been increasing inflation and things like that. Now the Fed has decided to raise interest rates 
in the, now in all of a sudden that uh, interest rates are going down again. So there's problems here. There's a lot of bubbles that are that are potentially going to be happening. And so I'm just I'm every ten years or so in American history you see this as cyclic ups and downs for the economy, and we haven't really changed much from what happened in mid 2000s. That's the reason why I'm scared. And I don't see Hillary Clinton taking enough of a major change in economic policy. And that's what that was always my major thing, the one major thing that I supported with the Sanders campaign. And that was why I wanted the revolution to go through. And so I don't think she'll do far enough. And so the question is, do you continue – like when your revolution – when you're, when the person leading your revolution, let's say your, your civil rights revolution or something, like the person is assassinated or – do you just stop the revolution? Okay, you know what? We didn't win. We didn't get what we needed. We didn't make that change. Do we just stop and just kind of commiserate and find the best halfway? Or do you keep going? So I say, in my my opinion with the Sanders camp- campaign and everything, is I continue on until the convention to see how everything goes there. Not so much that I'm expecting to win, but to push Bernie's message and push Hillary as far to the left as she can. I don't think the college tuition stuff would have come out if Bernie hadn't pushed her to it. I really don't think a lot of the major economic things, the, the, how she accepted and actually claimed a $15 wage increase in New York without Bernie's pressure. That kind of stuff is good for the Democratic Party. Bernie pushed a lot of buttons here, and he made a bunch of changes. If he doesn't get through, the idea is to change the political system in the United States. He's done it a little bit. I would have liked more, but if he forces her even further to the left and makes her say these things out loud, hopefully she'll attune to some of them. And then, okay. we, and, and then, obviously, if, she, if I don't see her having a hard time beating Trump. I really don't. It's just whether or not I am going to be making that vote. I wouldn't vote for Trump ever, or whether or not I would go you third could, party. You might. You, maybe you're a Trumpite. Maybe, maybe behind that mask, you're really a Trumpite. <laughs> okay, I, would, so, I would never vote for Trump, obviously. So, so I can, I don't, I can, I, the big thing is, is whether or not I want to hold to the ideals that we talked about. Uh, and a, uh, this was episodes ago about do you vote for your with your heart or your head? And I'm still torn there. I really don't know what direction I would like to go. The because- problem, the problem is though, I think you can't vote with your heart anymore. I don't think you have a candidate out there that you can vote for your heart with. So right, so Bernie, I get it. I get the Bernie thing, and I do agree with you. I do, I do believe that Bernie has pushed Hillary farther left than she ever has been. In my opinion, when Hillary started, she was a moderate at best. At best. And I know you used to claim you're a moderate. Left alone to her own devices, yes. She is very centrist. And and I get that. And I don't disagree with you. I think she's a little bit more left than than Obama was, honestly. But I I, I will grant you that Bernie has moved her from one section, you know, to slightly a couple of degrees to the left. I'll get I I'll grant that. Yeah. And and I will also grant that those of us for instance me, I would vote for I voted for Bernie over Hillary flat out. It wasn't even a question. I did. And it wasn't because I didn't want Hillary, it's because I want to have the candidate that represents my you know, my beliefs the the best. And and Bernie does that. Yeah. You know, he, so he, if he's he, no longer in it, then Hillary is the closest of between Hillary and Trump. Yes. And so that's your no, choice. No, no, no. Th- no, I disagree with you. There's more choices. You know, there's Jill Stein. There's Gary Johnson. Yeah, but I, I don't think, think that, that you either... would go that far. I, <laughs> I just assume that you were going to go with the most, the person who has the most chance to defeat the, you know, For the me, demon-headed orange dragon It, it man. depends, though. It depends. And, and we can get into this in a second because I think, I think this is an important part because... You know, Bernie recently has basically said that he will unify with Hillary. He he said that. He would support her, yes. Which yes. is interesting why he would say that and then say that he's still going to the to the convention. So Because I'm, because <laughs> there is well, he still has bills to pay, buddy. <laughs> I mean, like, no offense, but there's still bills to pay. But to a point he could be pretty effective. If he goes back, you know, to his seat, he could still be pretty effective in what he does. You know, he ran a very successful campaign cam- campaign. You can't walk in the streets and not hear Bernie's name. He, he's there. His name's here to stay. You know, if he doesn't get this presidential bid, he's not going to get another one. He's not going to defeat Hillary next time. And you know, then, he's too old to ever run again. That was the big it's, thing. It's like he was almost too old to run this time. And that's fine. But what we have to understand is that it is what it is. We're 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 there. He's moved politics farther left, which is, in my opinion, it needs to fucking go farther left. Yeah. And, and but that's just me. And then, but the big thing with the Bernie movement, and the big thing with Bernie endorsing Clinton, and the big thing is, is that I don't see the other candidates 
representing what I want better. And I'll be honest, I had concerns about Bernie in certain aspects. He he doesn't have foreign policy. He is pro Israel. And no, fuck all been, all of he's it, pro Israel. He's been pro Israel. He yeah. just because he renounces it during his campaign doesn't fucking mean that he's not, dude. That's not how what that means. And it's the same fucking way with he's not anti war. He's not anti guns. He he never was. He may be toning it down now because you know he's being brought up in the public fucking sphere. He's actually just, much more gun than a lot of other Democrats are. He, in Vermont, he's been very lax and very laid back. And that's one of the big things that Hillary was attacking him during the, the debates was that he wouldn't vote on the uh, um, the legislation to hold gun manufacturers. Exactly. And so, I mean, he's actually he's much more conservative when it comes to guns and things. Yes. Like, he's not anti-war. He's not a pacifist by any means. But and he, I am. Yeah, I know. And but he's <laughs> basically his idea is that if any war is going to be happening, it should be coalition, not American run. It shouldn't be imperialistic. And I think Hillary's idea for policing, if what she's done and what she's supported in the past, is much more imperialistic. And that's the reason why I don't like her. You're, you're, Hello, I'm Miss B. Haven. I'm Demanda Wright, and we're promoting, promoting secular, secular feminism. feminism. And you're listening to Cellar Door Skeptics. Hey y'all, this is Tucker from the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. And I might live in a beer can, but I ain't no inbred redneck. And if you listen to my podcast, I'm gonna learn you something. And no, I ain't talking about how to marry your cousin and not have kids with 16 fingers and stuff like that. I mean, I actually talk about real stuff. Teach people where the Bible stole its stories from. So y'all give me a listen, would you? Thank you. Hey, this is Keith. And this is Jen, and we're from Not Another Atheist Podcast. You're listening to Cellar Door Skeptics. Join the revolution. Right, but we have to stop and go. Okay, you know what? It's over for Bernie. I'm sorry. Like oh, I, I, I don't, I, know I don't know why we, 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 need to get the fuck off this illusion that Bernie can win. We need to, you know. I mean, what's his face? Um, our friend over at Patheos, uh, what's his name for the dispatches for the culture wars? Uh, Ed Brayton. Uh, I follow Ed Brayton. Ed Brayton's a little bit more libertarian than than I, <laughs> I subscribe to, but he's been, in my opinion, he's been dead on about Bernie and Hillary. He's been dead on and saying, you know what? Shut the fuck up. At some point, you, your rally cries mean absolutely nothing. No, super delegates aren't going to fucking flip. They aren't going to flip. And if they do, it doesn't mean that they're, Sanders is going to win, right? That's, that's not how it works. It, there's not enough of them to go around to, to make it so Sanders wins. And at some point, hey, it's not unconstitutional or undemocratic to have super delegates. We had that episode. That's the way this, the systems are structured. If we don't like it, then we have to change the systems. We have to fund our money somewhere else, and we have to convince other people to fund their money. And that's what Sanders was doing, right? That Sanders was moving people in that direction. He was. But we have to admit, at this point, we're, we're stuck. We're, we're, we're here. Hillary is going to be the Democratic nomination and so, unless there's some weird super fluke. And I'm not saying it couldn't happen. I mean, anything's possible, right? Well, I don't right? think a super fluke in, could... I don't think you. I would call a federal investigation a super fluke. I mean, the White House did say it was a criminal investigation. Most recently, I mean, these these things are still things that I'm waiting for the answers for. I doubt we'll ever actually get the total answer because if she does come into power, I I, I would assume that we'll never actually hear. You're, the now you're sound like a conspiracy. Now you're not well, being know, a skeptic well, about I, this. Well, come we'll on, see, we'll see in the future. We'll, yeah, we'll see. see I, future. I would love to see the results for everything. I don't see. I don't think we'll ever see competent results. You but, know, Bush. For, fuck off. You. you oh, sorry. You understand that Bush was investigated for almost the exact same thing, right? Oh, I know. I know. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And, there, it, and it, there's it so wasn't many unconstitutional back results then. and reports on all that kind of stuff. I don't think we'll ever get a completely honest report. I disagree. On that. I disagree with you on that. I well, think that people out, then are we'll going find out. I mean, that's the biggest yeah. thing. Is like I'm not going to sit here and freak out about it. I'm just saying that when it comes out, if you, it comes out, you are out, kind of a little bit though. You you are kind of going conspiratorial here. You are kind of what you're doing is you're doing it passively. You're just not actively saying it. You're passively kind of saying, "Hey, there's a problem here." Uh, there could be a big problem here, but you know we'll wait till the so reports I'm gonna come wait out. Wait until I have evidence to make the judgment that makes me conspiratorial. But you are kind of making a judgment. You you it'd be like me saying, "Hey, you know what? 
I don't think she did it, but... You know, I'm not going to make a judgment, but look at what I believe. So you can, if, if it's your belief, that's fine. But it is conspiratorial in the aspect of the fact that, in reality, we don't have evidence that Clinton did anything more wrong than any other president, any other, you know, congressman, any other senator. And, and, and if we're going to judge her for this, if we are going to judge her for this, then we need to fucking go after every other person. So if she did something wrong, in, in reality, I bet you there's probably 1,000 men that did something wrong over the past 50 years, or, well, I guess not 50 years, 10 well, yeah, years, but, and so let's stop. And so to me, it is a witch hunt. I'm sorry. If we go after her and we say, hey, this is you, and, and if there's one or two other cases that show there's a man that did it, then fuck that shit, dude. I mean, come on. That's picking on it. That's saying, hey, let's take Hillary down now. Let's take her out of it because we think Bernie would be less of a distraction, less of an issue, more of a, um, which is dumb because in reality, Clinton's going to be more of that middle road than than Bernie is. Bernie's not going to be a middle of the road person. He's going to be a person that says, "Fuck you guys. Look, I this is what the hell I am. I'm a I'm 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 a conservative socialist is what I call him, and that's what he is. And he's more of a threat to a point to conservative politics than anything else. Yeah. Well, all I can tell you is that by throwing the gender thing in there, I'm I'm not even referencing that. I've been told that so many times this week. There's an open federal investigation. I want to know the results. The Benghazi stuff came through, and look, it it fell on everybody's face who said that this was really important. She came out of that clear. It was complete bullshit. Once it was finally exposed in evidence, everything was fine. And so I am simply waiting judgment, and I'm saying that, hey, there is still a federal investigation happening. So that that is something that's all important. Right. I think that's important to know. Hold so on, hold on. You can no. call okay. that conspiratorial. Hold on, hold on. And you can on. rant so- and overtalk on me for as long as you want. <laughs> but seriously, I can. I have the mute button. Yeah, you know, I know. Well, either way, <laughs> th- uh, people keep yelling at me and saying that the fact that I'm supporting Bernie Sanders to go all the way to the convention is this thing that I said. Like, oh, because she is a she. It doesn't fucking matter that she is a woman. It does not matter at all. I am saying that there are things that I find skeptical about what her situation is as far as what she's done in the past. And I just want Bernie Sanders to go to the convention because she did not get enough pledged delegates. She needs the super delegates to get that full number to get the guaranteed nomination. Yes, she's so close to it. She can almost taste it. But I don't see there's any problem in people ridiculing me and telling me that I'm being this conspiratorial crazy person for saying to push your revolution all the way to the convention take it all the way to the top of the democratic national convention so you're, you're and moving try to your make that change you're moving the goalposts chris that's what you're doing i'm gonna i'm gonna call you on this you're moving the goalposts in the aspect of we're, we could talk about email gate if that's what you want to call it and, and 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 going to the convention i don't disagree with you that bernie should go to the convention i don't think that's conspiratorial i think that's just somebody that wants to run a good campaign and that in the end he feels that he needs to do this for his fans and for the people that are following him. I have nothing against that. I will not donate at this point to Sanders in any way, shape, or form and give him any money at all. If he gets the nomination, I'd easily vote for him. You know, And if somebody were to call me and be like, hey, you know, if we all go vote right now or we all go say something, that he'll have a better chance, I, I, would, I would still do that. But what's conspiratorial and it's saying, hey, there's investigation against Hillary, and I'm suspect of that, right? That I know the other the other investigation came out ahead, but this one, this one, hold on, we got we got to hold our tongues until this. And I'm saying, hold on a second. If we were to take and and and, and maybe this is just the SJW and me being an asshole, and that's fine, and you can call me on that. I, I that's that's fine. But if you look at it, Hannah, and you look at the way how it's being talked about, so what? Hillary is being investigated, right? She is. Is there other Democrats, Republicans, senators, congressmen, presidents that have all done the exact same thing? Yes or no? No. There's nobody else that's ever done that. I don't know any other major politician who took... Bush. Who took Flat out, I, I have an article. Ser- oh, they, they, they took the government server with classified information and put it in their home instead of keeping it in, in on you know, government soil. She actually took the government server with government and classified information and used it in her house in as a personal server. That is not that's not normal. They don't normally do this kind of stuff. The Secretary of State's have had their own emails, but they didn't use their own personal servers in their homes as she did. And that's the reason why there was so much trouble is because after that this thing went to different locations. That, that's the big thing. I don't know of any other case where any major politician involved with classified information as high up as she was that ever had a personal server in their home. So that's that's it. I, I, 
I have not seen it. I have not heard any other major politician that has done it. So a that. simple Google search right here says it brings up Bush instantaneously. Like it's an instantaneous thing. Like we could read every single article and maybe we should. But that's the thing is there you can't sit there and claim that. So there's one right here, flat out, that comes up with the Bush administration. Whether it's him or not, the Bush administration is being called out for that and has been called out for that. And that's just Wikipedia. We could go farther if we want. We can actually make a whole segment out of this next next week if you would like. And that's what I'm saying is that there is, just because of how you see it, because you see it as a different aspect as as the other one i'm telling you is well, that what were no the findings at the end they did an investigation and did they find anything i don't know how about this i don't know i, I know don't know that, that answer well we could thing, look though. that but up they had an obviously they didn't con- there was a conclusion yes. i'm simply saying wait for the conclusion and i'm and- sim- hold on but hold on but i'm simply saying is the fact that that if we want to talk about conspiracies it's more conspiratorial that somebody's running for office and all of a sudden this comes out that's more conspiratorial than, than anything else. And I, all I'm saying is that there's many others that have done this before her, many other people that have done these similar tactics before her. And we can't sit here and go, okay, well, let's focus on this person and not the others. And it is wrong that we go after this one individual versus others. And it is fucking wrong. Because she's running for president and everyone else isn't, though. It doesn't matter. That shouldn't fucking matter. That it doesn't, shouldn't matter t- that she potentially no. broke the law? No, not if, if she's running for president. You're under higher scrutiny if you're running for the highest lo- uh, office in the country. I don't give a fuck. If you're a fucking congressman or a senator, period, you should be under the same exact scrutiny. To me, it doesn't make any fucking difference. You're, you're influencing law. You're influencing change within our society. No, it shouldn't make a difference. And yes, it does feel a little bit uh, a fucking sexist here in this realm to me. For the fucking goddamn person to go, oh, you know what? It's Hillary. And guess what? Hillary is being demonized. Not just by the left or the right. They're, they're, she's being demonized by many people. It's not just... Listen to Jer- Joe and Jeremiah's show, Paleo Radio, for fuck's sake. They went after her on the email server thing, and they ended up being wrong about half of the shit they said. Flat out. Oh. And that, that's what I'm saying is that... So, yes, if we're going to be conspiratorial, then I could be just as conspiratorial as you and say, hey, look, she's a woman, she's running for president, therefore they don't want her. Because in the end, in the end, it would be easier for Bernie to be in there because he's going to easily be black compared to a Hillary. Hillary is more moderate. She's more neutral. She fits closer to both parties than Bernie does. And in the end, because she's been demonized and vilified for so many years, it doesn't make it right that we should go after her for an email server conspiracy, for fuck's sake. Even it, that just started? That just because randomly campaign, started? It says right here that uh, in 2009, National Archives and Records Administration expressed concerns over possible violations of normal federal government record-keeping procedures at the State Department under Secretary Clinton. I mean, this is a a, uh, a website from uh, Politico written by uh, Josh Gerstein. And uh, these types of things, I'm telling you that this is not just as it magically appeared just during the campaign. So, I mean, we, we can agree to disagree. We'll probably never find a solution. I will on never this. agree to disagree with you cuz I think that's I a stupid word. I just want to know word. what the result is. Who gives a shit? In the end, <laughs> so if the result is okay, so she gets everything and the result is yes, she did break the law. Then what what happens? Yeah, cuz to me, when we look at it, everybody fucking breaks the law, Hannah. <laughs> you know, Bernie's on her investigation too. So that's what I'm saying is like you, you, we, we we for us to make moral judgments, you have to sit there and go, okay, what moral judgment is there? Is it worse than the other moral judgments? Is it worse than anything else that's been done? You have to weight those. That's the way it works. That's the way things work around here. If if there was a president running who had murdered somebody, would that be worse than somebody with an email conspiracy you know, server thing? Well, yes. If they were under investigation for it. So you're saying it doesn't matter until the investigation has turned into actual criminal charges. That's Thank essentially you. what you're telling me. Yes. It doesn't matter until charges yes. are pressed. Yes. And, and, and when charges are – so, again, this is being trumped up based on what's happening right now. And I don't care what anybody says. That's that's the way it feels. That's the way it looks. This is being trumped up. And I'm saying is, yeah, you know, when we look at – we could take the secular movement for fuck's sake and we can compare it. And it, there's – we have somebody that you and I both fucking worked with that we know there was some bullshit that went on, Right. And neither one of us have gone out of our way to talk about it. When neither one of us have gone out of our way to take and make an example out of somebody until all the facts and everything has been presented. And that's the way it is. And, 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 and to me, if there is facts there that need to be investigated, let them investigate it. 
I'll move on with my life. And I'll tell you what, if October comes, right, and all of a sudden she's criminally indicted, I wouldn't vote for her. I'll vote for Jill Stein. It'll be a simple transition. Boom, I'm done. I'm not going to vote for that. Even if it means we get a Trump, because I won't vote for somebody that is aggressively criminal that, that did something. But in the end, I, we'd that's have... That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the, the Hillary Clinton email we're talking scandal about it. is the problem it doesn't mean anything. that would make me not vote for her. The, there's a, there's a Who cares? Let's not talk about it. Then. It's there's not worth talking about. There's a laundry list of problems. That, well, that's the thing that I've been getting attacked for. There's a laundry list of problems of reasons why I would not vote for Hillary Clinton, and I would prefer to vote for someone else. And but I would the, attack the, you for that, that too, to a point. Is still any of those critiques? I keep getting back to the same situation. She's she's just not the candidate that I would vote for. And this this it, the reason I say that Bernie should stay in it, continue on, even though everybody's telling me that it's ridiculous and it's it's sexist that he's continuing on, even though he but again you're conflating ideas. You got to stop doing that. It's if people are telling you it's sexist, it's not because you're against her email servers. You're conspiratorial in that aspect, but it's not. That's not the sexist part of it. If you're voting for Bernie because you can't stand a woman candidate, then fine, I'll agree with you. If well, you can't recognize... Wanna... Okay, hold on, hold on. If you can't recognize the fact that she does have a lot of experience in the government on both the foreign and the, the, the national side, on, on our side, on the the home side, whatever the hell they call that, yeah, if you no, can't I, at I least don't acknowledge with that okay. at all. She is incredibly experienced in the establishment that exists, and I don't want the establishment to exist. And I that's want to fine. change it. And so that's why I disagree with the majority of the things that she does. I mean, one of the articles that you that you uh, included that we'll actually be sharing with everyone is from CNN Politics. And at the end of it, it's essentially saying that it's kind of covert sexism that Bernie Sanders is continuing on. I'm seeing this all over the place, and I'm saying – just run to the end of it and see what happens. Just push the envelope. And like I said at the beginning, push the revolution as far as it goes. It, it, trying to change the political system. And, you know, everyone keeps dogging it because it's male versus female. If uh, Elizabeth Warren was in the exact same position as Bernie Sanders and losing by as much as Bernie Sanders, I would tell her to continue on in exactly the same reasons with no philosophical differences or changes in my procession at all. She, she is very similar to him, and I, I would feel exactly the same way I feel towards Bernie Sanders as I would for her. So why is that argument all of a sudden, because he's a male, that's the reason why some of these arguments are happening. And I find that, I find that, that's where I have problem with. And that's when people accuse me of that for the same thing. It's just like, listen, the gender thing, I get it. I get it that we have problems in this country. But that does, in my eyes, in my head, is not part of this at all. I'm sad that it's a part of the rest of the world. But for me, it could be Elizabeth Warren in the exact same position. So it's, am I doing the same thing? By saying that Elizabeth Warren should push to the end and push to the convention and try to change the shit out of the system, I don't think so. And so, I, I, that's, but I'm going to disagree with you on that in some aspects because I do. I'm not going to dis- tell you that Bernie pushing to the end makes you sexist, but I, I am going to say that that just because he's not, she's not the candidate for you, you have to be willing to overlook other aspects, and so you don't want to be part of the establishment. Technically, Trump's not part of the establishment. Just so you understand, like. Technically, what Trump's doing does violate establishment politics. He does violate all sorts of these other things, whereas Hillary doesn't. And, and, and there's a huge difference between Hillary and Trump. There's a huge difference. I mean, we can argue all day long about how she's big business and how she's big bangs, but she's she's very anti a lot of the things Trump is. She's not going to build a fucking wall. She's not a racist. She's not going to you know be against same-sex marriage in the same way he is. She's not going to be against transgender laws the same way he is. She's not going to be against, you know, fucking abortion and be a pro-lifer the way he is. And Yeah, yeah no, I, and I, uh, those, that, those are basically straightforward things. And, and hold on, expect. hold on, though. You're, you're right. But to a point, though, what you're saying is that your, your belief in that you want an anti-establishment politics, that you want to be the anti-establishment is more important than breaking the ceiling and putting a, fe- a female um, president in office. You're saying that that's more important. And that's fine if that's the way you see it, and you're welcome to your own beliefs. But if people do call you out for being sexist, you do have to admit that her politics, let's just say 50% align with you and what you would believe, and that to a point, to a point sometimes breaking that ceiling is more important than moving society forward in a socialistic way, because if we jump too far forward without bringing everybody else with us, it's just going to be a bunch of us white men sitting around, just like they did when atheism became a thing. And it's just going to be a bunch of us white men sitting around going, yep, hey, 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 glad you made it out. 
good for you. And you do at least have to acknowledge that point that there is a valid discussion that can be had about breaking the ceiling and putting a woman in office. And she does hit 50% of your politics at minimum. Okay, so the breaking the ceiling thing is an important factor. The most important thing to me is the economic position for this the entire campaign. That has always been my my most that you know the 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 one topic that is the the one for me. That that is the one that I drive through. And if there was any other thing that would go past a a candidate that would keep us out of economic peril, then yes, obviously the most progressive candidate. She would be up there for women's rights and stuff like that. There's no, I'm not debating that. I'm not saying that breaking the glass ceiling is not incredibly important. I personally think for the health of this country that the economic problem and solving the globalization stuff and making the, the, the workers not have to compete against Chinese slave labor, I think that is more important than breaking the glass ceiling. I just, if we do break the glass ceiling, let's say we did, what, what did we do the two elections ago? We broke the glass ceiling with an African-American president. That's, that's awesome. That's great. But what happened? The exact same political situations that happened before him continued. I would disagree with you. There have not been a bunch of major continued problems. Obviously, we switched over from a Republican and a conservative presidency for two terms to a Democratic presidency for two terms. But economically, we're looking at the same kind of thing. Uh, trade agreements that are detrimental to society, problems with uh, policy and, and things along those lines. So to me, it's still the hyper, the hyper economic situation is what is the big driving force for me on this one. And so I would put that higher than breaking the glass ceiling there. And that's fine. And you're welcome to your opinion. And that, folks, that, folks, is exactly why I'm probably a little bit more socialistic and liberal than Hannah is on some points here. And that's fine. And and we can we we are not going to agree to disagree because I don't like that terminology anymore and I I disavow it and and and, and you're again you're welcome to your opinion that's the whole point of seller guard skeptics right you gotta get you gotta get a little bit of both sides you know you gotta get a little bit of somebody and a little bit of somebody else and without that it wouldn't be the show that it is so thank you Hannah for your opinion on this one. So we're, we're going to close the segment out because I think if we spend too much more time, Hannah's going to throw a glass at the back of my head. And if you could see the picture of that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be any fun. So make sure you stick around because we have more Cellar Door Skeptics, and we're going to talk about a little bit less controversial topic and go into talking about technology that's going to break the language barrier. And then we're going to end with Hannah's most awesome, awesome science segment. After last week, and I, and I got to stop a second here because we we did we did a very science heavy episode last week, didn't we, Hannah? Yeah. Well, we're gonna going into two science topics here. We're we about we to go are into like electronic, automatic, super duper translator brain computers, and then we're also gonna go into black holes not eating information. Anymore. We are, and and, and 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 I'm sorry, like, and maybe it's just because I go through phases and I'm bipolar and I'm all sorts of crazy and shit. But all of a sudden I'm on a science kick, and it just seems like it. And it's like, yeah, we got to talk about the Trump and and, and Bernie anything and then the Hillary thing it's like no I want science and he's like well hold on we got to be a little bit more fair to the to, to those listening so we're very sorry for a very long political rant but it was it was it was due in the making it was due in the <laughs> making we had to get it out and now we're going to go back to the cellar door skeptic science segments about talking about the future in translation through technology and then after that we're going to talk about black holes that don't disappear make sure you stick around because we'll be right back with more Cellar Door Skeptics. This is Ishmael Brown at H and I C from the Angry Black Rant Podcast, and you're listening to the Cellar Door Skeptics. Hi, my name's Callie. And I'm Ari. If you're like most of us, you're very concerned about the gay agenda's plans for world domination. Are you tired of seeing glitter all over every damn thing? Do you hate rainbows as much as any other red blooded American? Then we have the answer for all your baseless fears and unjustified paranoia. Presented exclusively on Secular Media Network, the Gay Theist Manifesto is your source for news, commentary, discussion, and debate at the intersection of the atheist movement and the LGBT rights movement. You can find us on Spreaker, iTunes, and at gaytheistmanifesto.secularmediagroup.com. If you're not ready to get in line for your mandatory gay marriage, and you're terrified of short-haired women in pantsuits, Come have a listen and get up to date on their plans. You'll be glad you did. This is Trav Mamone, host of the By Any Means podcast, and you're listening to Cellar Door Skeptics. Prepare for the revolution. We have cookies. Now, back to 
the show. Welcome back to Cellar Door Skeptics. Thank you so much for sticking around through that Trump versus Hillary versus Bernie versus Hannah has become a sexist versus Chris calls him out segment. <laughs> yeah, the, the temperature might go down a little it, bit here. I mean, I, I haven't hit him in the head with the baseball bat yet. So yeah, he, once, he doesn't once have the episode's one. over with, I'll get the shovel, I'll take care of the lie, and everybody will have it. All set, and we'll, there won't be any questions, and we'll just forget this episode ever happened. Yeah. And see, <laughs> he, he wants to, but in reality, it's been a good episode so far. But we got to talk a little bit about something less political. We, we got to talk about science, because to a point, uh, our show has kind of morphed into the let's have a conversation about science aspects. And, and I think I think it's because both of us can agree aggressively on, on the scientific aspect Um we we both are very evolutionary based. We both enjoy the science aspect of it. He comes from a little bit different background than I do. I, I, I don't have the science background he has, but he has an engineering degree, and that works out very well because what it does is it provides a unique perspective to things that I may see fun and cool, and he'll be like, well, let me explain the science behind that because of this, 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 and this. And, and, and I may find it boring at first, but in the reality of it, you know, there's... <laughs> There's a lot to learn behind it, and, and I enjoy I enjoy new technology. I guess if you want to call we're, it that, we're we're touching a bit on the hearing stuff too. So like that's true. We, I mean, there's an interesting perspective from a person who can't freaking hear to be able to talk <laughs> about the uh, the new technology that can translate in your ear. So uh, I I really I really do think this is a cool topic. We're not just going to talk about the in your earbud type translation stuff. There's a bunch of really cool stuff out there, and I I mean I thought this was going to be like, hey, let's review this technology, but we're gonna we're gonna get deep. We're gonna get we're gonna get deep and talk. Talk about life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> and, and how Hannah has decided to support Trump. But <laughs> besides that, so the, there, there's an article on telegraph.co.uk called Groundbreaking Gadget Claims to Fit in Your Ear and Translate Foreign Languages into Real Time. And, you know, on a, on a base level, you just sit there and go, well, that's kind of cool, right? I could travel the world. I could, I could go to, to Europe. I could walk through Ro- Romania. I could go to Italy, I could go to Russia, I could go to Japan, I definitely want to go to Japan. I could go to, to China, and we, I'd be able to hear what they had to say. Is this thing wirelessly connected, or is it just like smart enough that it has all those languages kind of built into it? That's the big thing for me. I, it's, it's wirelessly connected. They, they compare this, this gadget to the Babblefish in Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy. I, I love the Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, they call it the babblefish. And we all, if if you've come from the upbringing we've come from, you understand why you, they call it the babblefish. You fish. have come from. I I've come. All right, fair enough. I always thought languages were cool. I didn't think that some... some, uh, some God very, said you some can't very, have multiple some ones. Some very narcissistic douchebag was kind of screaming about people kind of climbing up there. And, uh, <laughs> and they all talk the same way. I better fix that quickly. So <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, the, 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 the nice thing about the babblefish, right, is, you know, it, it's small, it fits in your ear, you know, along other things, it feeds on brainwave energy, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's the one in the book, not, not the one in real life. That's not the thing that you're yes, going to stick in your head. that's not the thing. You're not going to stick a fish in your it's head. It's not going to drink your brainwave it's not, energy. It's not going to be like the second episode in the, or the second movie in Star Trek. You're not going to have something go into your, dig a hole into your brain and kill that's, you. That's, the, that's how the uh, the Walking Dead started. Everyone <laughs> put the babble fish in your ear and ate their brains. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But the 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 product they want to put in there they they call the pilot it, it roughly it's one hundred and twenty nine dollars so it's cheaper than a cell phone right and what it says is it works by connecting two different people speaking two different languages and translating what they say right into your ear it's basically like a smart earpiece capable of translating two different languages at the same time and the company that's made this is called Waverly Labs and they've developed the technology on their website by saying this little wearable uses translation technology to allow two people to speak two different languages but still clearly understand what each one is saying. And if we just look at a base level in terms of traveling and seeing the world, if more people had them, this is genius, right? I mean, for $129, you can go to most cities and be able to speak the language or understand the language that's being spoken and speak back.
back and they can understand you. You're you're going to break language barriers, which what is one of the major causes of third world countries? And I guess that's probably the improper term. I think I was told that was the improper term, you know, <laughs> last time we had a goddamn conversation. But what is it going to do? It's going to fix that language barrier or allow you to continue to speak your own language and your own integrity. So it doesn't mean that we get to go to, I don't know, let's say Germany and be like, oh, you can't speak German anymore. You got to speak English. We can now be intersectional and have this conversation and be like, all right, here's an earpiece for you. Here's an earpiece for me. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, we can cheers at a German pub and drink pints together. Can, I mean, that yeah. would be awesome. That That's the big thing. I, I want to travel. I really want to travel the world. And I, I personally would find it. I, I, I feel like I'm insulting the people of the land that I am traveling to when I can't even remotely communicate with the people in the language. I, I know it's really difficult to learn language, but I would think that like, if I'm going to Germany, if I'm going to Japan, if I'm going to China, that like, hey, spend six months and learn a little bit, pal. It, 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 it's tough to say. I mean, it's really easy to try, say I'll do it, but it's tough to actually put into, uh, into practice to learn a little bit of language and learn to be able to speak. This kind of thing would be a nice, easy out. The only thing I'm worried about is that in the in the, on the actual Waverly Labs website, it shows the, the earbud things connecting right to your phone and so we're talking you know the google translate i don't know if you've ever used the spoken word to text through google it's not perfect and i mean <laughs> on, on facebook is it'll ask you it's like hey do you want to translate this if, if anybody that you're friends with on facebook is is uh from another language and it either uses bing or it uses google and it translates it, and a lot of times it translates it to relatively understandable gibberish. So I, I at, at its current level of technology, its current sophistication, my guess is that you'll be able to understand the gist of what someone's speak, planning on or saying. But my, I, I don't think it's going to be as seamless as like you know, a, a utopian situation where we can like perfectly understand kind of like how the UN has an actual person listening and then speaking and everything uh, with a little bit of delay. I don't think it'll be that perfect. I just, I, I've, I've, I'm a hearing loss person. I've tried these translatable things as far as speaking instead of, um, I, I've tried the, uh, when someone speaks and it types for you, uh, the new Google docs has that ability. You can talk and it'll write for you, and it's it rarely gets exactly what you want. So, I I would I I'm guessing this is a good bridge technology. It'll be awesome to test out to try, and some you know, really internet tech savvy people will love it. But my guess is that there probably be one or two generations that then that'll this will be like trouble shot. It'll be perfect and work incredibly efficiently. Yeah. But that's the way technology works. I mean, you, yeah. there, this is ground to me. This is groundbreaking, and 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 so yeah, you're right. Could we travel the world and be able to be appreciative of that culture without having to learn another language? Because you're you're right, and it's funny because uh, the intern at my company, his second major is German, right? His first major is international business um, management, and his second major is German. And him and I actually were talking about this this week. We talked about this. And I said, you know, it's kind of funny. There's this new technology come out for $129. They can stick this thing in my ear. And he goes, yeah, you know, that's not really fucking funny, right? And I was like, why? <laughs> and he's like, well, I, I've spent 20 grand on my education. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be able to actually fluently talk in German because of this. And it's like, okay, fair enough, right? You know, if, well, we're, I- if we're looking to the world and we're looking for what he's looking to get into, I mean, he wants to go work in a business and be able to translate you know, for other companies, right? He he want that's what he wants to get into, and, and I don't think this is going to replace that. No, this is this is still a ways away from being able to replace a human that's pretty sufficient and completely fluent in a language. This, this the machines the machines aren't ready to rise. They're not that intelligent and that sophisticated. People will still be significantly more useful when it comes to full on translation. This will this is the way I see it. This is kind of like a help you function in another culture. Like this is mm-hmm. this is good enough to to get you to the point where you can talk and uh, get into a taxi cab, uh, talk with someone to get a a, a hotel or something. I, I don't think this is going to make you a, <laughs> an aficionado in language and uh, for culture or whatever. But it'll it'll help you with the bare necessities. But but doesn't it open the door though, Hannah? I mean, and, and that's really why I'm interested in this. And yeah. I know you 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 kind of mentioned, hey, this is this is good for those that are hearing impaired, right? Because to a point. And we can expound on this in a second. If it can start translating languages, 
at some point, will it be able to translate brain waves? Will it be able to help people who are hearing impaired be able to hear better in some different aspect? Because to a point, that's all that those hearing aids are doing. They're just taking sound waves and, and creating things digitally so you can understand it. They're just breaking code between your brain, the sound waves, and, and, and different aspects of life, right? It depends on the kind of hearing loss you have. Like, my hearing loss is nerve damage, and so essentially all of the pieces function properly. It's just the connection to my brain that doesn't function properly. And so it would be like someone who is uh, losing their vision because of optic nerve damage. Uh, that that isn't so much a, a a new glasses, a new lens situation. It is that there's something functioning improperly in the connection and the wiring. And so, it, if even if the best functioning translating super hearing aid speaker or whatever was the, beyond anything that anybody can handle, if it if it can't get from my ear to my brain, no matter how good the equipment itself is, the wiring itself is fun- is is faulty, then there's no way I'll ever actually be able to hear any better than a certain level. Yes. So, like, even with my great hearing, like, my hearing aids are pretty good, and we talked about this before, like, they're expensive. For me, like, $3,500 a pair, now they're around $5,000 to $6,000. I got to pay for that because health insurance doesn't cover it because young people don't ever lose their hearing, don't you know? Yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, even with my hearing aids, we were talking about if you if you go around a corner or something, I can hear maybe a third, maybe 25%. Or possibly even less than what you can hear, and I would say that my hearing, even with my hearing aids, is probably what someone would be able to hear if they were like, "Man, I kind of need to go get a hearing test. <laughs> I'm missing like thirty percent of what I'm what I'm being told or, or what I'm talking with people." So it's I, I'm curious to see what new technology will, but I'm I'm also it biological in my situation. Yeah. So and you're right, but the difference is is what this technology opens up, in my opinion. Is it opens you, up the yeah. no, no hold on hold on no 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 I think it opens up the door because what it does is it says okay so if we can do this in a certain way how do we advance this to the hearing impaired right how do we move in and I'm sorry if that's not the right word like or maybe make it a little don't less crucify weird. me make it a little less weird that people have things in their ears yeah well but sure fair enough you're right that's yeah what, in that, that was aspect, always with me like the, you're the right. bane of my existence was like what the is in your ears man yes i mean yeah imagine being able to put something in your ear and be able to translate (laughs) what somebody in the south says sometimes you know i mean like sometimes i listen to bobby and ashley show for npr or nrr and i'm like well well, what the hell did you just say (laughs) southern speak what the fuck is that shit you know they told us that we have that michigan accent we do they got a southern accent what the fuck are you talking about so yeah this could fix that but (laughs) let's hold on let's be serious for a second here like because i think this is going to break a lot of barriers in my opinion and you're right. Like for somebody in your situation, and others that are hearing impaired, I I, I do have a, a great empathy for what you have to go through and what others have to go through. There there is an empathy I might be a part because I don't I don't have that right. I've I've ruined my hearing not because of the fact that it's biological, but because I listen to way too loud of music for way <laughs> too fucking long. I I will be that old guy that when you know death because. Not because of, of biological issues, because of choice. And that's fine. But I can't disparage you or anything that, that's happened to you because of that. And I can't say, well, this would be so awesome for you because it's not really going to fix anything on your side. But what it does is it opens up that technology to say, okay, hold on. If we can do this here, how do we take it to the next level, right? So once this is accomplished, it allows and frees up people to go on to the other side and say, okay, hold on. So there is a biological issue. You know, your nerves are damaged. You, you're lo- you're not able to hear because the, the wires between the two aren't functioning. How do we repair those wires without doing extensive surgery? And maybe it is transplants. And, and, and honestly, I'm a transhumanist in some aspects, and I'm not opposed to you getting biological, you know, transhumanist ears where you have mechanical Let's get ears. Let's that, that Reeves you. stem cell there. stuff from South Park going here. There I, you uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> now, the... Um, I guess a good parallel would be to the next technology that we were talking about. It's basically just using the cell phone to take an image of a menu in another language, and it'll translate it on screen, real time for you. This, this, this would be something that someone who you wear glasses, a vision impairment, this 
even if you can't if you can't see the screen very well, you still can't see the translation. So I I mean, if it could talk to you, I, I maybe you would be able to hear it. Like if you could visualize it, and then your phone would speak to you, like some devices can or whatever. But the the this other technology is essentially you can take a photo or just hold your camera up to a menu in another language. Most recently, the big thing that that they're able to control and connect to Chinese and and uh, other dialects in Chinese, which huge market there. This is this is real time technology. You can point it at a road sign. You got a direction. You got a language. You got this. This is this to me. I think would be you know the a, a more useful tool for basic travel than uh, the in the ear understand other people because this it would at least be cheaper. Me, this it's, it's cheaper. I mean, I already have the phone. I download this little tiny app and I'm good to go. As opposed to putting the earbud in, the earbud's still cheap. But this is like what what was this app? It's like. I don't know, you know, like oh, fourteen like dollars or something. Yeah, something like yeah. it's just so. This is really cool. This real time stuff. I I didn't know that Google was able to do this. And I agree with you. I think this is this is, in my opinion, this is a pair mate to the other one, right? And, and and I think if if we look at things right, and we look at things on a deeper level, you you have hearing loss, you have nerve damage, you you're not able to hear things. For you, this app. It's probably more worth useful. more, <laughs> 17 times more yeah. than what that hearing aid thing would be. And for me, I could probably use either one. And, and whatever one would come more naturally would work better with my personality would be what I would want. I would probably buy the hearing translation thing because for me that would be more beneficial than reading on the screen. Or you can get all of them and be the most seeing, hey, hearing, I, translating <laughs> human ever. <laughs> Fair enough, but I, I wouldn't want to do that. I mean, I don't, I don't need an edge up over anybody else. But what I think is neat, and I think this is this is the neat part of this whole thing, Chris. The neat part is is that, and, and yes, it's a little capitalistic, is that companies aren't just looking at one niche here, right? They're not just looking at the earpiece. And if they do look at the earpiece, there's another company that's looking at the language piece. And I think that's what's genius here. And to a point, you, you, you make an extre- extremely fair point. As much as I want to disagree with you just because you're anti-Hillary, as much as I want to disagree with you on that part of it, you make a very valid point that this text thing, outside of those that are, are vision impaired, <laughs> this makes more sense. It's more logical. It's a cheaper device. It's a cheaper app. It, it'll be able to be upgraded based on improvements easily, quickly, and cheaply versus a hearing aid that is going to be really hard to you know fix, right? Yeah, well, just remember that Bernie wants everyone to have this, and Trump <laughs> wants to build a wall around it. <laughs> and Hillary is just saying, "Hey, I'm in the middle, of guys. I don't really no, want Hillary, to." Hillary is siding with the people who are going to make money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, in that case, then you should be more than grateful because, in this case, capitalism yeah. has won out. Because, yeah. in essence, you know that's what's driving this. We're not saying is, well, there's more hearing impaired, ver- impaired versus vision impaired, or vice versa. And we want to go with with everybody. We want to help everybody else. And, and as a humanist, that's where I stand, right? And, and, and politics aside, as a humanist, how can we make life easier for everybody else? And we have to acknowledge that there is disabilities that that happen. And we do have to acknowledge the fact that those of us who don't have the disabilities have to be sensitive and work towards helping those. So if I was if there were seven billion people and one person had a, a hearing disability, okay, fine. But that's not the case. We're looking at large percentages of people have hearing or vision loss disabilities to the point where these apps, these hearing devices, they serve a purpose, man. Like they they do. can really increase someone's quality of life. If you could think about, like I'll say, something, like you work with uh, with people that speak other languages they have they have we dialects do. and stuff we do. Uh, if, if i have to talk with some, surprisingly enough the spanish language depending on where they're from it's very difficult for me to understand when they speak english i have a really difficult time with cubans i don't know why i live next to a cuban it was insane i played on a uh, spanish speaking baseball league in the grand rapids area and it was insanely fun a lot of the mexicans the people that actually from Mexico, I could understand really well. I, I could understand the way they, they spoke quickly. But uh, Dominicans and Cubans, uh, just no chance at all. It was unbelievable the way they twisted and moved things around. So I could potentially ask them, speak Spanish. 
and let this little doohickey do the deal for me, and then we could communicate or whatever. So like these kinds of things are really cool. I I think it's awesome, and I would love to see where it goes. Well, I I guess we could just keep an eye out for when the technology comes through, and if we ever manage to get a hand on it, you know, when we get real big, maybe they'll send us one to test out and sample. <laughs> Yeah, when President Obama or one of the well, congressmen or the Pope, for fuck's show, sake, man. yeah. And if if, if y'all don't know the reference to that, you should go back and listen to some of our older shows when we claim high priority figures may at some no point. No offense, Hitler. Well, no offense, Hitler. <laughs> Jesus. But as as we wrap this segment up, because I don't I don't want to spend too much time on this. I think th- what this, what's going to happen, and we talked about glass ceilings earlier, but what I think will happen with this technology is it's going to bring a better quality of life to people. It's going to bring a way for people to connect on a different level than we've ever had before. And I think what's important, if we want to look at it on a humanistic side or on a capitalist side, is almost similar. On a humanistic side, we're going to be able to bring our fellow humans together. We're going to be able to relate better to each other. We're going to be able to understand things in different quantities and qualms than we ever had before. And maybe it'll lead to more infighting. Maybe it'll lead to more unification. On the opposite side, on the capitalistic side, we have to look at how this is going to affect business. How is this going to take a hold on where we're going to go in the future? This provides opportunities for somebody like me who works for a company that is international. I will be able to work in different departments, have something like this, and it will make my life simpler. And we're going to be able to reduce some of those specialty costs that maybe cost a fortune and bring them back into line with other things. And, and we can argue about whether that's good, bad, indifferent. We, we, we can argue all those different aspects. But the big thing is, is that this technology will revolutionize how we communicate with other world. And all I can with say is I'm worlds? very uh, – other countries <laughs> – Maybe other worlds too. You never know. You know what? I sure hope so. I, I sure do. hope this bad wolf fish can talk to the uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Beetlejuice um, and oh man, I can't remember some of the other Beetlejuice four or something was the uh, the big one from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So maybe we can talk to uh, the Zaphod and uh, Trillian and all the great people in uh, Douglas Adams' wonderful world. I highly recommend it. If, if anyone. The one big thing: if you don't know the Babble Fish, you don't know the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Check out the complete, the complete edition. It's one of the greatest things. You'll, I can't wait until my daughter's old enough so I can read it to her. It's one of my favorite stories <laughs> of all time. Well, on that note, on that note, make sure you check out the links in the description. Check out this technology and look into whether it's a, some investment worthwhile for you. Whether it's something you want to share with those around you. Or hopefully this was at least an entertaining enough segment to distract you from the Trump versus Hillary debates that will at some point plague every fucking media outlet you can imagine. And with that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to refresh our drinks, take a quick piss, and we're going to come back with Stephen Hawking, black holes, and whether maybe Hannah has just kind of walked down a black hole in his support of Trump. We'll be right back with more Cellar Door Skeptics. Hey guys, this is Wyatt Mathers from the Atheist Avengers Podcast. You are listening to the Cellar Door Skeptics. Prepare for the revolution. Hi, this is Dan, Ryan, and Matt with the Godless Revolution Podcast. We've had a lot of great guests on this show. Such as Russell Glasser, Dan Errol, Brian Fields, David Silverman, Doug Mesner, a.k.a. Lucian Greaves, and Joey Kirkman, whom we love a lot. We've also had a lot of really cool local guests. And we're a podcast that likes to fight for the separation of church and state and against anti-skepticism of all kinds. You should give us a listen because if you don't, you're going to be really sad. Make your ears happy. Listen to the Godless Revolution this podcast. This is Deborah McTaggart from Beyond the Trailer Park. And you're listening to Cellar Door Skeptics. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to Cellar Door Skeptics. Thank you so much for sticking around through those uh, first segments on our show tonight. We are. We are in episode 35, and, and I got it right this time because Hannah and I spent a lot of time over the past three hours doing shots, trying to figure out what episode we're on, determining on if it's even worth continuing to have this conversation. I mean, because he's like, hey, 
I support Trump. You should also. You should. You should. You 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 should join me in my Trump rhetoric because I had nothing left because Bernie's disappeared. All hail the orange lizard people. Exactly. That that's how <laughs> Hannah sees the world nowadays. He sees it through orange lizard eyes that are glassing over. I'm still waiting for the uh, the Ted Cruz. VP nomination to come out of uh, <laughs> that creeper bastard. I'm sure that's not going to happen. And then if, if Cruz gets the VP nomination, he'll immediately decide that the United States should secede from itself. And, and as he does that, he's going to create a black hole, which is a lead-in, a lead-in, a very poor lead-in, but it's a lead-in <laughs> to our next topic about black holes. And we had this article from The Economist called, We Want Information. Even Stephen Hawking sometimes turns out to be wrong. Who better to put him right than himself? And so, Chris, you brought this article to me, and you you did this whole outline. And it's funny, because we did two topics that we talked about for an hour and a half, and I didn't do a fucking shit for an outline. <laughs> I just throw you links at you and said, read this. And you were nice enough to provide a whole outline, probably because it's a science segment, and you love science more than you love anything else, even Bernie. And you were like, hey... This is an important topic. Let's have a conversation about it. So why don't you lead into the reason why you picked this specific article and and let's let's start about talk about why you want to talk about this conversation. Well, the uh, the one of the things I like about Hawking is it, the fact that usually he's right. I mean, the guy has a great track record, but he in his book, The Grand Design, like you can check it out. He says that he was wrong about something. He he said that the best way to move on and get past the topic is to admit you were wrong. And he admits that he was wrong on a specific topic. And he says who was right. It's an awesome moment. And uh, it reminds me of Richard Dawkins, the God Delusion moment where there's a scientist who has been pushing a certain topic and another scientist comes in and gives a speech and proves the one scientist wrong and he goes down and shakes the guy's hand instead of swinging animosity that you would expect. That's the kind of scientific you know, ex- exploration and future that we would expect. Well, Hawking's the same way, but it just happens that he proved himself sort of somewhat wrong. What he had originally done in 1974 is put together a... Uh, his paper basically that proved Hawking radiation is essentially that black holes are vaporizing, they're evaporating, and uh, the information that gets past the uh, the event horizon is gone. It's lost forever, which ev- it violates causal determinism. And this is this is this is the tough the part that gets a little bit tough about this. But the the um, the entire topic itself is that black holes. No longer, according to this new paper, delete information. Information is still saved. As it, it's it's crushed and smushed in the uh, black hole, but little bits of stuff on the outside, right around the outside of the the event horizon, hold that information, kind of a record of what went into it. Well, and ho- so that hold on. it's saved. So it's almost like a hard drive, right? Kind of, that's that, that's the way they describe it. It's, it's like it's an a organic s- hard drive. It's it, like if GMOs got deleted. And all we had left was good produce because it was done organically. <laughs> yeah. The idea is that the black hole is like, they, they mention it's like this hairy, wiry, confusing area. A hairy, um, wiry, and confusing well, that was, that area? Was, that was the weird thing. I, I was like, okay, this is a new way of describing the uh, the event Like my horizon. dog got into the, you know, the, the litter box. <laughs> <laughs> well, the black holes, when, when they're when they're evaporating, whatever, there's, there's a series of things that are happening there. And there's these weird little things called soft particles that are in the right on the outside of the event horizon. And they're usually photons and gravitons. Gravitons haven't been specifically uh, observed, but they're expected to observe as a you know, in relation to gravity, giving things gravity, uh, much like the Higgs boson gives things mass. And so um, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff that, that these these really soft particles are actually recording information. And so what this does is this kind of gives uh, validation to causal determinism. And that's the, the, to start with that for what the entire topic is, is holding to and why this is important is and then why information being destroyed in black holes is important is for causal determinism. It's roughly speaking the idea that every event necessitated by antecedent events and conditions together with the laws of nature. So the idea is that ancient one, I mean, we all think of like everything being controlled and uh, uh, the loss of free will or whatever. It's, it's uh, first became subject to clarification and mathematical analysis in the 18th century. 
but we we've been deeply connected within the physical sciences and so the explore, exploration of you know the the world itself and having any one thing in physics lead to another thing imagine like basic mathematics there's no physics equations that that don't expect and deal with certain laws and rules and logic so the entire universe is run by those laws the information being destroyed violates a few of them and so th- this causal determinism meaning that no information is destroyed all energy cannot energy cannot go into something and then just disappear forever anytime energy is moved from one place to another it has an equal and opposite reaction and that's through thir- the first law of thermodynamics and newton's laws and so th- this the black holes have been in violation of that that equilibrium that uh, causal determinism saying that all parts of physics are equal that they they work out in the end and that's why this new paper is so important the um the information that that should have been lost and that uh, was proposed to have been lost was uh it's it's now according to hawking is being kept hawking is being kept in the uh, photons and gravitons around that outside area well that's i mean th- this is this is really really outside the norm stuff this is what we've been expecting with from uh from hawking for years and years and years and he's he's pushing he's pushing the boundaries of what he's doing but um he's he, he's uh working with cambridge based cosmologist stephen Oh no, he has he is um Cambridge based. And he's working with um some new uh some new people. Andrew Strominger of Harvard University and um there's one other gentleman that's involved in this as well. And this from uh, Malcolm Perry uh, also at Cambridge. And these guys are all working on this stuff and they all have very specific areas and what what they're um what they're paying attention to. But uh okay, now is this your first foray into causal determinism? I mean this this kind of sounds like the uh, you know the ter- determinism that you were brought up with that says that you know everything is set forth everything has a reason you know the the godlike reasons and stuff like that. So. Yeah, so this is not the first foray into that realm, if you want to call it that. I mean, we never went to the scientific level that you've got here. Yeah, everything but, has a reason. But we yeah every, we were brought up that literally everything had a reason that you know if God decided that you were going to get a tick in your ass and you had to go to the hospital and fight off Lyme disease <laughs> it was it was because of God and, and we we believe that you know any any aspect any determination was all directed through God whether we liked the answer or not and, and it, we learned how to relocate these answers how to understand them how to develop them so that when they happened. We could explain them away without any questions. So yeah, you know, apologetics, man. Apologetics, yeah. You know, I dyed my hair red in eighth grade, and my mom had a heart attack. Said it was evil against God. My youth leader's like, well, why? He dyed his hair red. Who cares? <laughs> and you know, I got grounded for fucking three months <laughs> for dyeing my hair red at camp. But you know, the the underlying point was that my youth pastor basically said there is no Bible verse against it. I understand he disobeyed you, punish him accordingly. But seriously, think about it. He's only rebelling in some aspects because, in reality, who gives a shit if his hair is red? Who cares? Yeah. Well, then there's the all the all the the idea that you know the free will and everything that that God has instilled to people. Well, th- if he if he gave you the free will and the right and the ability to to dye your hair in which way what what are you or who are you to say that his idea was wrong? Well, the same kind of thing happens when it comes to talking about causal determinism and talking about the way nature runs the world. We can't have these aberrations. We can't have these supernatural puffs and pops and things. So, we've been trying to figure out not we. I'm not part of the the uh, experimental world, but the scientists who are at the forefront of explanation and uh, exploratory um, derivations of all this kind of specific scientific uh, uh, information and these theories. These guys are they're trying to explain why there's this supernatural bump. Why is this information lost? It's supernatural in such that it's violating the laws of physics. And so now we may have an answer to that. We've, we've shrunken, you know, the out of the gaps. And so basically um, this is a specific direct um, quotation that I wanted to go through. Uh, the Hawking radiation itself is a consequence of the fact that a vacuum is not actually empty space. Now, this is important. It says, rather because of quantum uncertainty, pairs of particles, one of matter and one of antimatter, are constantly popping in and out of existence. And this is kind of the the, uh, the Lawrence Krauss, how can something come from nothing area. These particles 
which are distinct from the soft variety whose emergence Dr. Strominger studied. These are the soft ones that, that retain information that were dependent upon on this art, on this uh, theory. They normally annihilate each other as soon as they pop up. So the antimatter and the, the, um, the regular matter, they, emer- they uh, obliterate each other. Well, the uh, leaving nothing behind. Well, however, they appear at a black hole event horizon. One member of the pair may be pulled in while the other is not. So the stranded particle is thus forced to become real, and it acquires energy, which it takes from the black hole. And that's the black hole. This this is the Hawking radiation. This is the little bit of energy that's stolen from the black hole. And this is what Hawking um, he proved basically. So it reduces the uh, the black hole's mass because energy and mass are equivalent. Well, given that such energy exists, the hole will vanish. The wrinkle in the new paper introduces the behavior of the now real Hawking radiation particle as affected by the soft particles and encounters when it materializes. This causes the modulation that preserves the causal determinism. So essentially we're giving, we're saving that information. And that new that information is retained in those the half pairs. And so we're not losing the information. And information is used in a different way than when we say like, okay, information about uh, a flower. It's got purple petals, it's got green stem. Information itself, when it comes to the physical world, you know, mass, uh, physical properties, those things can't be lost completely. And a, before this paper came out, they were considered to be lost completely. So this is this is cool stuff because it kind of, says, hey, the idea that the universe is um, it's functioning the way it should and it's not doing what we, what we don't expect, making things disappear without any kind of explanation, we're a little bit closer maybe to understanding what's going on with the black holes. And then after that, it gets weird. I don't know if you read a little bit further in the outline, but uh, it talks about doors to different universes. Uh, what do you think? Do you think the black hole is going to be a door to the different universe or the wormholes or stuff, or is this just going to be the uh, speculation we'll never know? Speculation we'll never know. <laughs> oh, come on, man. you got to have some science fiction in there. I do. I do a little bit, and, and, and I get it. I get it that this this topic is is very prominent in the aspect of it's changing how we see black holes, right? Is changing how we understand the vacuum. Is changing how we we could pop in and out of existence. Is changing how what we originally thought nothing could come through black holes, right? Because it couldn't survive. How we see the event horizon for these, the whole thing could change. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know how event horizon was the actual technical scientific term for that. Oh, you just thought it was the movie? Yes, I love that movie. <laughs> the by the way, I love that. Movie. I'm sorry, I do. I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies, movie. actually. They had the guy from Jurassic Park in it. It did, and they use a Zeo <laughs> song in it. You know, and they use you know the the Liberate Exxon Ferris quote from Zeo album from yeah. you know Liberate on Hell or something like that. Yep. And, and and I get that right. So there there's a there's a consciousness and a consequence of what could happen or what they're talking about happening, right? Yeah, we're just, we're we're basically, we're closing up a little, we have all of these theories and we have all of these hypotheses and we have all of these, these ideas. And so we essentially, we just closed a little door. We closed a small space provided that uh, further experimental information in the future. Cause that's one of the things it says at the end of the article. It says that this isn't completely and totally codified into law. This isn't, perfect and completed it's it's the initial speculations based on you know hard basic math or actually probably incredibly complex math but this is like this is this is the the mathematician and the theoretical physicist coming up with the idea now it's the job of the actual experimental physicist to be able to create an experiment that can test this you know the large hadron collider creating mini black holes maybe maybe will give us this information in the future to 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 verify our uh, our mathematical and our our physics uh, expectations and, and theories and everything so this this is just it's awesome to see that Stephen Hawking is still putting together some cool ideas and working with some really really great collaborations hopefully this will be confirmed and we'll have you know like I said one small bit of hope information is not lost we've solved that little puzzle and so it, maybe the rest of the ideas, the postulations, they, it, one of the things that they, I've seen quoted, the NPR quoted, it says that, hey, if you find yourself stuck in a black hole, don't panic. There may actually be a way out. But the only problem is that it might be into a different universe. We don't really know yet, but uh, the, there's a good chance that your information won't be lost at least. So 
I don't and, know. And if you go into the other universe, I mean, is it that bad? I mean, it could be, right? Well, yeah. We don't well, know. If if a multiverse exists... It could be the universe that Donald Trump rules the whole universe. Or it could be the universe that Bernie Sanders won and executed anybody that didn't believe like him. Oh, relation to Hitler. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, you're taking the uh, the the, uh, the nationalist socialism uh, party to a long <laughs> to a long and ugly stretch there. Yeah, but in all seriousness, everybody. I mean, in all seriousness. To me, this says two things. One, a brilliant mind in science admits he's wrong. To to me, that's big, right? Because is it's not about him. It's not about his papers. It's not about what he believes, what he doesn't believe. It's not about what he's discovered or hasn't discovered. It's about the fact that when a member of science finds out new information that contradicts or enhances old science, they develop it. They accept it. They work towards completing it, right? They work towards making it as as genuinely sound as they can. And to me, that's the big point here. Like, I, I get that black holes is a the theme of our show, obviously. I mean, we talk about black holes all the time, it seems oh, like. man. We talk about it so much. I, I actually messaged Dan Basildor, and I was like, hey, man, any updates on your book for uh, Astronomy Saves the World? And uh, you got any ideas and thoughts, quips, queries, concerns on the uh, the new paper that's out? And I, I didn't hear back from him. As far as I know, he's back over in England, so he might be on the wrong timeline, and he's probably going to wake up in the morning and be like, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> Uh, and he, why, and he why, will. why are you weird Michiganders messaging me all the time? I don't want any of these photos. What the hell? <laughs> but uh, but, but no, the, we, the, we, we're, we'll give you an update when we hear a little bit more about his book. And when the whole thing's out, we're going to give a review. So yeah. we'll see what he has to say about the, uh, the black holes and uh, the super duper information. Yeah. But the important part is that science is correcting itself, right? telling you is that science is redefining itself it's 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 creating itself it's giving itself a new leg to stand on it's saying is okay i was wrong partially i mean no offense stephen hawking isn't 100 percent wrong he's only partially wrong and what he's doing is he's saying is hey new theories new possibilities are emerging i'm going to entertain them i'm not going to reject them and I'm going to do, use the scientific method to the best of my abilities to understand and determine if the new discoveries are correct or invalid or who knows. Maybe they're next, the next Einstein of the group. But we can't spend any more time on black holes. We've spent a lot of time talking about Trump and Hillary. We've spent a lot of time talking about new technology and then black holes. Because both Hannah and I love black holes and at some point we wish we lived in the event horizon. <laughs> It movie. would be pretty cool to like stick like half of your head over the edge, just to see whether or not the other half came back or not. It would, but you would never know if it didn't work, so Man. we're just not going to do it. But to those who are still listening <laughs> through all of this, thank you so much for sticking around Cellar Door Skeptics. Make sure you head over to iTunes and throw us a rating, any rating, a one star, five star, two star, three star, whatever floats your boat. Redfish, greenfish, bluefish, yellowfish, Send whatever us dead it is. animals in the mail. We don't care. <laughs> Any rating on iTunes will help move the show forward. As well, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can find us on Patreon at Celebrate Skeptics. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I think Hannah's on Pinterest. Any place you can find social media, we're at. We're overly inundating people with fucking information <laughs> we're, but we'll spam you as soon as we're your friend <laughs> we, we, <laughs> Hannah might Hannah might he knows he's not able to control his spam we get banned alerts. regularly on Facebook but anyway thank you so much for sticking around through another episode of Celebrate Skeptics we'll be back next week with a lot more pertinent information a little bit about Hannah's belief that Trump is the best candidate and we'll probably have another crazy shit Chris used to believe Thank you so much for sticking around Cellar Door Skeptics. And remember, prepare yourself for the revolution. Have a good night, everyone. You've been listening to a presentation of Cellar Door Skeptics. Check us out on Spreaker. CellarDoorSkeptics.com.